I don't think strategically, oh, I'll do this commercial thing and then I'll do this more independent thing. I just, each film, I think if I only get to make one more movie, is it this movie? I'll make it like it's the, my last film I'll ever make because one day it will be. Scott, the main event, the queen's here. <laughs> oh, thank you, really. You're, you're like my favorite reporter. It's so good to see you again. Oh, that's going in the reel. So good to see you. Oh my gosh, I love this movie. I Great. saw it like eight months ago at Beyond Fest. Freaking awesome. You have an actual black phone in your basement. I do, I do. When I finished the movie, I bought a new house. My old house burned down in 2018. I'd been living in an apartment, so I bought a new house. And uh, my first night in the house, uh, there was a phone that rang in the basement. And I terrifyingly walked downstairs and I opened the basement with a flashlight and the black phone had been installed in the basement. And uh, Jason Blum uh, managed to get somebody into my home and installed a black, black phone in the basement. When I answered it, it was him. And he also had it programmed so that if I ever pick it up, it just direct dials his cell phone number. So <laughs> yeah, that, 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 was, that was really wonderful. And it's still there, I'll never get rid of it. Well, I interviewed Jason Blum yesterday and we actually tried to call your black phone, but you're not home. <laughs> oh God, I'm, no, I'm in New York. Uh, <laughs> but if I had heard it ring, I would have answered it. I, I always pick it up if it rings. There's, it's rung a couple times, but every time it's rang, there's never been anyone there, which is creepy. I hate that. That is the most Jason Blum thing I've ever heard. Um, so w when it rings, like if he calls you, what what does that mean? <laughs> if he actually calls the black phone, what happens? You know, it's it's just kind of a fun way for us to get a hold of each other uh, quickly. It's like the bat phone, you know. <laughs> we text a lot. We we leave messages, but if but the black but the the black phone is the bat phone. If one of us really has to get a hold of the other, then we know uh, you got to pick up the black phone, you know. I love seeing you and Ethan Hawke reunite. And I just talked to him and he was very much like, oh, when I got the script, I was like, I'll just read it, but I'm definitely not doing this movie. How do you feel like you were able to convince Ethan Hawke to take this role because he is just amazing in it? It was just the script because he told me, you know, when I gave it to him, he said, look, I don't really play villains. Uh, you know, it's unlikely that I'll do this. And then uh, I went to bed, I sent it to him and I went to bed and then in the morning, he had left me a voicemail in the voice of the grabber, reading one of the lines from the script. And when I heard that, I knew that that was his way of telling me he was gonna do it. I just think that he read it and, and realized that there was a, a, a challenge in it that I think he wanted to take on. And I think the challenge was specifically to play a role that is performed behind a mask, because I think the brilliance of what he does is that he lets the mask do the work of the mask. He lets the mask be scary and he lets it be menacing. He lets it be sadistic. It's all those things. And somehow he's able to bring all these interesting nuances from behind that mask in the iterations of his voice in in, in, in this, this kind of performer magician gestures that he does. Uh, he just so somehow had uh, an ability to create a very complex character um, without a backstory, without a lot of information. And uh, that's that's what great actors do. You know, they, yeah. they create uh, at that level. I, it's one of my favorite things I've ever seen him do. That's why he's one of the greats. Do you still have the voicemail of him doing the grabber? I do have the voicemail. I don't have it with me, but, I, but I've kept it. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll always hold on to that. Amazing. Um, now this, this movie's kind of like, I keep hearing you're returning to your horror roots and I, we don't have time to dig into everything, but like, what do you feel like this like new chapter for you looks like? Do you feel like this is a start of maybe this kind of partnership with Blumhouse or what do you kind of see doing next? I mean, it was a return to Blumhouse, you know, this was kind of getting the band back together. Um, I do have a TV deal with Blumhouse, so I want to continue to develop more material and uh, both in film and television, uh, uh, you know, for the genre. But, um, you know, Jason is my, the person I'm closest to in the business. I, I mean, we have a really close personal relationship. We, he knows things about me that no one else in the business knows. You know, we sort of share all of our dirty little secrets with <laughs> with each other. But I think that uh, he's very protective of me creatively, you know, so I'm always going to want to be able to come back and work with somebody who just it lets me do what I do, you know, and uh, he does that in a way no other producer ever has. Um, but I, in terms of what I do in the future, I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't try to plan out too much too far in advance. I don't plan my career strategically. You know, a decision that I made years ago uh, around 2008, 2009, 
was that I would make each film uh, as though it would be the last film I would ever make. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think strategically, oh, I'll do this commercial thing and then I'll do this more independent thing. I just, each film, I think if I only get to make one more movie, is it this movie? I'll make it like it's the, my last film I'll ever make because one day it will be, you know? And so far that strategy has worked out pretty well for me. I think this is just a top tier movie. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Oh, I really appreciate it. It's my favorite of the films I've made, I think. It's certainly the only film I've ever made that I haven't gotten sick of watching at this point. I, I did see a ranking yesterday that puts this as, as your number one, so. Oh, good. I'll, I'll yeah, take yeah. it. Thank you so much, Scott. Such a pleasure. Hey, it's really you. good to see you. Always nice to hear from you. And uh, good luck to you, too.